Okay, chapter 10 is all about plants and with a focus on what they look like and how they work, the structure and the function. Um, there are many, many, many different types of plants and we'll be talking about some of the main ones. Um, we'll be talking about the different types of structure, that is what they look like and how they work or their function. And just as we've been saying all throughout the year, form follows function, meaning that what they look like dictates what they do. What they look like relates to how they work. Okay? All right. There's certain levels of organization that we're going to be looking at. The smallest, of course, is the cell structure. That is what the individual parts of the cell are. And then moving up in size, we have cells. And cells combine to form tissues. And tissues combine to form organs. And then organs combine to form organ systems. Different organ systems working together create the entire plant. So, yes, Megan. Exactly. Um, it's called organs because they have a specific job that's different from other jobs in the plant. And once we start taking a close look, there are more jobs than just getting sunlight energy and converting it um, into sugar. Um, that's part of it. Mm -hmm. um, there is water movement. There is nutrient movement. Um, there's uh, excretion. There's a whole bunch of different jobs for each organ system. Okay, adaptations to land. So um, we've covered the algae, um, which are seaweeds. Those are creatures that live in the, in the sea. Um, most plants, not all, but most plants live on land. And there are certain adaptations that those plants have. I'd like you to write these three vocab words down. Um, the first is cuticle. And the cuticle is the waxy, waterproof outer coating on the plant that helps it um, retain water inside of it without leaking water to the outside environment. Um, so it helps a plant um, retain water to survive out of water and um, the type of plants called succulent plants are masters at this. They are plants that usually live in the desert where water is at a premium um, and very scarce and so these plants have thick outer coatings and uh, large water uh, reservoirs, uh, huge water vacuoles in their cells that um, allow them to retain the water and hold on to it for long periods of time until they're ready to use it. Um, another adaptation to land is a pipe called a xylem. And um, xylem is a pipe inside of a plant that moves material up. And the type of material that it moves up are water from the roots and minerals from the roots that it gets from the soil. So water and minerals from the soil go up into the plant with this type of pipe on the inside of the plant called a xylem. It's a tube, kind of like a blood vein of the plant, but it's in, an, in a plant, not an animal. The opposite of that is phloem. And phloem is another tube, and phloem goes down. And the stuff that it carries down um, is sugars from photosynthesis happening up high in the leaves. And the sugars that are produced in photosynthesis are carried down through the plant um, to the rest of the body of the plant um, in this stuff, stuff called foam. And the way you can remember this, memorize it, one of the ways, is by just memorizing xylem up, phloem down. Um, and, and if you memorize that, you'll remember which one goes up and which one goes down. Yeah, Darcy. Uh, 
that's good. A river flows down, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, whatever whatever means you have to memorize, you use that. Good job. Okay. Um, structures for material transport. So this is basically the highway system of a leaf. If you cut a leaf open and looked at the different parts and organs and um, and organ systems in the leaf, um, this is what you would see um, drawn out in cartoon form. So right here is the xylem that I talked about, right there, and phloem right below it. Um, the upper outer part, the, the epidermis, has this outer waxy cuticle protecting it. Um, and below that are two layers of cells. One is called a palisade parenchyma layer, and one is called a spongy parenchyma layer. You don't have to remember those, memorize those. Um, the lower epidermis, know that the lower epidermis um, has um, what's called stoma, and stoma are openings where, um, where stuff comes in and out. And um, CO2, in fact, goes in, and oxygen comes out, and we'll talk more about that. Here's a vein of the leaf, another picture of a vein. Um, there's uh, surrounding the stoma or the holes are what's called guard cells, and those guard cells open and close depending on um, the day or night and um, whether it, the plant is um, taking in CO2 or giving off oxygen. And uh, we'll be looking, we'll actually be looking at those um, at those cells under the microscope here pretty soon, as soon as I can get out to the forest and collect some plant leaves for you to come back and look. At. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys want to bring in some plant leaves? Yeah. If you want, bring in plant leaves this Thursday. Okay? Absolutely. Okay, plant life cycle. Um, this is something that you'll want um, to know about. Um, plants have a two-stage life cycle. Um, a sporophyte stage and a gametophyte stage. Um, and the sporophyte stage is the one that you see um, that produces spores. And it's large and showy. The gametophyte stage produces sperm and egg. And it's small and diminutive, meaning that um, it's, it's harder to see this stage of the life, if at all. Um, and it sometimes is microscopic. Um, so the gametophyte stage is the sexual reproduction part of the life cycle of the plant, where there is sperm and it fertilizes egg. The sporophyte stage is the asexual part, where, where spores are produced and shed. And oftentimes, these spores are triggered by environmental cues, such as heat. Um, so sometimes you'll see plants that give off um, spores if it's really super hot and um, the spore casing explodes and it dries out and explodes and spreads the spores um, that will then generate uh, new male and female plants. Now, plant classification. I'd like you to write this down. At the very simplest or highest level of plant cl classification, there is a vascular level and a non-vascular level. Vascular means it's carrying liquid or material, xylem and phloem type stuff. Non-vascular means it doesn't carry that. Okay. Are we good with that? but I'm going to go into that in a little bit more detail now. Non-vascular plants, so plants that um, do not have ways of carrying water and um, uh, minerals throughout the plant using xylem and phloem too. 
some characteristics of those plants are that they grow low. That is, they grow low to the ground. They require moisture and shade that's absorbed directly into their tissues and not carried throughout the body, but just absorbed into the tissue. <coughs> and they don't have vascular tissue. I'd like you to write this down. There's no vascular tissue. There's no xylem up, flow them down. Yeah, Megan? I sure will. In the next slide, I sure will. I'll be bringing some of these guys in. These are some of my favorite plants. Is it okay to move on? Okay. Another sec. All right. So examples of non-vascular plants. Um, of the hundreds of thousands of plants that exist today, um, they can be classified as either non-vascular or vascular. Non-vascular plants, small, they live in moist environments, and um, mosses and liverworts are examples of these. So there's a moss on the left, a liverwort on the right. Liverworts are super cool. And and have any of you do any of you recognize this? The liverwort? You've probably seen you probably seen those. And mosses as well. Because that's an interesting story. Um, I the way I heard it was that it looked like a spot on a liver when a liver was dissected, and they didn't know what it was, and they and it, they thought, oh wow, this looks like the wart on a liver. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's true or not. Okay, that is it for today.